Right, it's another one for Sleep Month, and I'm chatting with Natasha Watkinson. Natasha, do you want to just tell us a little bit about what you do, and then we'll talk about sleep? Sure, yeah, so um, yeah. So thanks Emily for inviting me on today. Um, so yes, I'm Natasha Watkinson, and um, I'm a nutritionist, and I um, help ladies in the sort of perimenopause and menopause, um, help them kind of manage their symptoms better, and, uh, and also help with, uh, with weight loss. Awesome. So sleep, I mean, so many of us struggle with it through perimenopause and when you've had a bad night's sleep, it's just awful, isn't it? Yeah. yeah I mean, um, so many of the, of the women that I talk to that I work with in my, in my clinic, um, you know, come to me when they're, when they're having problems with sleep. And I think, you know, it kind of shows up in, in, in two ways. Um, you know, some women struggle to get to sleep um, but I think what seems to be more common during the perimenopause is that sort of waking in the middle of the night and then not being able to get back off easily. And that's what I sort of find from talking to a lot of people that they find particularly frustrating. Yeah. And I think, you know, a lot of us find that we wake up in the night needing to go to the loo. And, you, you know, previously you would just sort of stumble to the loo, stumble back into bed and be fast asleep again, wouldn't you? And nowadays it's like, oh, now I'm awake. <laughs> So what can we what can we do? How can we how can we kind of manage that? So um, I mean I think there's um, I think there's there's a few there's, there's sort of no kind of quick fix unfortunately. Um, there are a few sort of different sort of ways of kind of addressing it. Um, there's, um, there's things that you know, maybe kind of around sort of sleep hygiene. Um, and um, you know your, your kind of sort of environment in your bedroom to think about. So we we can talk about those. Um, it's probably things to do with um, your kind of blood sugar balance and how you're kind of eating and what you're eating across the day. Because if you're, if you're sort of maybe relying on caffeine and sugar because you're tired, kind of get you through the day, then you might be having kind of big peaks and troughs um, in terms of your energy. And if your um, blood sugar kind of crashes during the night, um, that can be a cause of kind of like you're having a sort of a stress response. Your body's kind of having a stress response and keeping you awake. Um, and then I think there's also something about dealing with stress and how you kind of manage sort of stress. Because um, I think one of the things we, we focus a lot on estrogen, we think a lot about estrogen when we think about what's going on with our bodies in the perimenopause. But um also big drops in progesterone which is another hormone and sometimes people call it like nature's tranquilizer um, and it can lead to us feeling more stressed and less able to deal with stress um, and so that can then have a big impact on our sleep so there are there are two or three things that you, you know I tend to find it's a little bit of a jigsaw puzzle yeah um, and there's yeah two or three things that we sort of need to look at to kind of help people sleep better so if we if we address each of those in turn, so sleep hygiene, what do we want to be doing? Um, so I've got some sort of like simple kind of um, do's and don'ts with sleep hygiene. So I would say, um, you know, the first thing in terms of like do's and don'ts, um, my, my kind of the big one that I sort of tend to start with first is about caffeine. Um, yeah. so, um, so caffeine can take an awfully long time to get be processed by our body and we don't process things as well as we get older um so you know caffeine can take 12 hours to get rid of the to kind of be processed through the body so if you are having problems with sleep and i suggest maybe trying to limit your caffeine to the morning you know having those morning cups of tea and coffee but maybe after lunch you know after maybe two o'clock in the afternoon think about having decaf options herbal teas decaf coffee decaf tea so that you've not got any caffeine in your system uh, when you're trying to go to bed. That's that's a that's a real biggie, isn't it? And I've I've seen a, a lot of comments from women saying that you know they used to always be able to drink coffee at five in the afternoon and they'd be fine and da da da. And now they're finding that if they have caf, caf, any caffeine beyond let's say eleven o'clock in the morning, nah. Yeah. And, and it's it, it's as much as anything, it's listening to what your body's telling you and learning what the new landscape is isn't it yeah yeah definitely you know, 
Um, it always surprises me now when you get offered a coffee in a restaurant. It's like, oh, God, I can't drink coffee at nine o'clock. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'd never get to sleep. Yeah, well, it's, you know, I could have done that in my 20s. It would have been absolutely, you know, it would have been absolutely fine. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely uh, a little bit of, yeah, listening listening to your body. Um, I think it's something that um, you know, some of the other things are around um, kind of light in your bedroom. Um, so trying to make the bedroom dark, you know, and even light sources like having your phone there, um, you know, things that might light up if you're getting notifications in the middle of the night. That blue light is really kind of um, disrupting. Um, so trying to make the bedroom really dark, um, removing any sort of little kind of, you know, pinks of light. Um, and also trying to make it cool because, you know, otherwise, you know, we're all kind of prone um, as we go through the, the perimenopause to feeling hotter, uh, maybe having some night sweats and things like that. So thinking about the temperature of the bedroom as well and making it making it cool. Yeah. Um, some some things to sort of think about in terms of um, like a bedtime routine. So um, maybe trying to wind down a little bit before bedtime. Um, um, you know, thinking about, you know, reading a book, um, watching TV, but not things that are going to make you really anxious. You know, the news, but news at 10 o'clock probably isn't a great thing to watch. With, not at the um, moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's going on in Ukraine at the moment. So, you know, things that you find relaxing, um, you know, whether that's, a, you know, a, a, you know, comedy program that's just going to make you feel a bit more lighthearted, reading a book, listening to a podcast, having a bath. Um, but yeah, trying to sort of wind your body down, you know, like you would do, you know, if you've got children and you kind of, you know, have a very set kind of time routine, you know, they have a bath, they have a story and it gives the body all those kind of cues to sort of wind down from the day. Yeah, absolutely. So if we then move on to sort of blood sugar, because that's another biggie, isn't it, that you mentioned? Yeah, so... Um, I mean, I think if you are having trouble sleeping, then um, you know, it's very easy to start kind of relying on, you know, on caffeine to kind of give you that boost in the morning, you know, maybe kind of having that sort of mid-morning, you know, sort of skits and things like that to kind of give you that sort of energy burst. Um, what, what I see quite a lot with women um, as we're going through the perimenopause is unfortunately our bodies don't process sugar as well. Um, and so it's more common that you start kind of having these sort of sugar imbalances where maybe you feel like you're on a little bit of a roller coaster where you kind of have your breakfast, um, you know, maybe some cereal or, you know, kind of toast and you get this sort of boost from what you're kind of eating. Um, but then later in the morning, a couple of hours later, you get a bit, a little bit of a slump and you get those kind of cravings. So, you know, you kind of have that sort of mid-morning snack, maybe a cereal bar or a banana or something like that, and you get a little boost again. And then you and you slump down. And um, it's a lot of a lot of women that I speak to kind of find and that they feel like, you know, they're kind of feeling quite sluggish in the afternoon. They're sort of feeling quite tired um, and quite sleepy when they used to have that problem in the afternoon. And, and it is sort of due to these kind of blood sugar imbalances of, going up and down during the day that that can lead to kind of having a blood sugar crash at night which then which then really disturbs your sleep um one of the big things that you can do about that is trying to make sure that you have protein with every meal um because having that kind of protein with every meal and every snack balances off the release of release of the sugar um for many carbohydrates that you're eating um so thinking about you know simple ways to include protein at breakfast um, so maybe having peanut butter on toast instead of marmalade or if you're having something like you know something like oats like porridge or overnight oats adding a couple of tablespoons of nuts and seeds to it so that you've got some, some protein with that sort of carbohydrate type breakfast um, or having, um, if you, you know you want a quick bowl of cereal before you dash out the door, um, having a sort of um, like a granola that's maybe got like a lot of nuts and things like that in it, um, are kind of quite sort of simple options. Um, yeah, sort of trying to make sure that you're having a good amount of protein with every meal across the day, even out 
even out your blood sugars and stop being on that kind of up and down roller coaster. Yeah, that makes sense. And then the last one was stress. I mean, where do we start with stress? <laughs> well, um, yeah, I mean, we definitely could be here all day um, talking about stress. Um, you know, it's a it's a big kind of, you know, often it's kind of a big challenging time of our lives. You know, we're kind of, you know, we've got jobs, we've got teenage children, maybe, we've got parents that are getting a bit older that need more help. Um, sometimes it can seem like you know we're kind of even lower than the dog you know it's like well you know well I've got to walk the dog and I've got to get the it's pat lunch is ready and then I've got to get to work and I've got to do this and it's like well where's the time where's the time for you um and I think on, you know we don't deal as well with kind of stress with everything that's going on with our hormones so um you know trying to sort of carve out some time for yourself maybe learning to say no to some things um you know have you know don't always have to go to everything or you know do everything um you know that that can be something that you know, is um you know to sort of give, your, give yourself a little bit more space and a little bit more time you know listening to your body a little bit more um I think especially around kind of stress and sleep, one of the things that um, some of the women that I've worked with found useful is like journaling, because if you're kind of waking up with that worried mind, um, you know, with lots and lots of thoughts going through your head in the middle of the night, and sometimes getting them down on paper um, can kind of get them out of your head yeah. and make you kind of calm down and relax. So whether that's writing things down before bedtime or even having a pad and paper in another room if you really can't sleep and you can wake for an hour you know getting up and going to that other room writing them down on a piece of paper and um, just kind of gets them out of your head um, and you might look at it in the morning and think oh yeah I need to sort that out or you might look at it in the morning and think why was I so worried about that because sometimes it can seem so irrational or you might not even be able to read your handwriting but it yeah, sometimes the act of just writing it down just releases it from your brain and calms your brain, and then you might feel able to go back to sleep again. Yeah, absolutely. Those, those are some really, really easy, but really good tips that people, you know, easily implementable, but really impactful as well, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, definitely, I definitely hope, that, you know, there are sort of small things that you can try. Um, you know, and it's probably a case of finding out what works for you. But yeah, definitely thinking about your sleep hygiene, thinking about what you're eating during the day, trying to get more protein at every meal so that you're not on this kind of roller coaster. Um, and then maybe just thinking a little bit about your stress levels and any ways that you can help help reduce that. Awesome. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. Natasha. Thank you, Emily.